Hello, and you're welcome to the City Newsroom. My name is Vivian Kai Loko. Coming up. Traders predict dwindling sales and collapse of businesses in the coming months following the passage of three major revenue bills by Parliament on Friday. But the money that we are using or what we've invested in our business, we can't buy the, item, the amount of items that we used to buy. At first, maybe you buy this, you can, the money can buy about 1,000 of these series. But now we have to buy 500. So it will affect us a lot in some way, but we will manage. Electricity Company of Ghana continues with its disconnection exercise. Also coming up, National Democratic Congress begins vetting for all persons wishing to be parliamentary candidates for the 2024 elections. <laughs> And later, scores of NDC supporters throng High Court Tamale to show solidarity as hearing of criminal case against the Sablelugu Member of Parliament, Jacob Idris, continues. Jacob Abdelai is a very responsible elected member of parliament and would never ever be a fugitive of justice. He probably did not exercise good judgment in the reason he provided to the court we did not please my lord but subsequently we have to avoid a third occurrence of this Let's bring you details of our stories. We'll start with the biggest opposition party, that's the National Democratic Congress, because it has begun vetting nationwide for all persons wishing to be parliamentary candidates for the 2024 elections. In the Greater Accra region, all persons vetted on Monday are confident of winning the internal elections slated for May 13. City News' is Akosia Otri has more. In the Greater Accra region, vetting for parliamentary aspirants began at about 10 a.m. on Monday at the regional headquarters of the NDC. A six-member committee together with the Greater Accra regional executives spearheaded the vetting exercise. Parliamentary aspirants in the 11 constituencies, that is, Ningo Pram Pram, Okankwe North and Central, Shai Osudoku, Madina, Domekwabinya, Adentan, Trubu, Sege, Anyaswotum, and Ayawasu West face the vetting committee. <laughs> Some incumbent members of parliament who are seeking re-election spoke to City News about the process. I have come to the regional office of the NDC in fulfillment of the processes towards our parliamentary elections on the 13th of May. I went through the vetting. It went pretty smoothly. I am grateful to the regional vetting committee and the national team that came in and the regional executives and the constituency executives I assured, in fact, the question was asked that when I came for my vetting four years ago, I promised that I was going to do an operation gap 20,000, which meant that I was going to give the NDC a 20,000 vote gap on the NPP. We delivered a 30,000 gap, and so I was asked this time what we will do. And I said in the last election, we secured 50,000 votes for the NDC. This time around, we will secure 100,000 votes. So we've launched Operation 100,000 votes. And I'm confident that with the team I have, we will win the, December, the May 13th election, and we will win the general election and give the NDC and John Mahama 100,000 votes. I picked number one on the ballot, 
and I think it's just simple. Our presumptive flag bearer, John Mahama, is also number one on the ballot. And as the presumptive parliamentary candidate for Ningo Pram Pram, I'm also number one on the ballot. And so to all the delegates in Ningo Pram Pram, you know how we do it. Wayale, John Mahama, get number one, Zoo, Sam George, get number one, Za. So we go John Mahama, Zoo, and Sam George, Za. It's on to work, on to victory. The next six weeks, it's to deliver a resounding victory for John Mahama, 98% in the presidential, and at least the 70% for myself in the parliamentary. And I'm confident that the good people of Medina who saw the potential in me to lead them and gave me an overwhelming endorsement in the 2020 elections. I'm sure the people of Medina are still waiting to give me the same endorsement in 2024 elections and even give us, I mean, wider margins, uh, not only for the presidential, but also for the parliamentary. Now, I am also confident that the delegates of Medina, I mean, they know what is best for Medina NDC. The delegates know that when it comes to NDC in Medina, there are only two people to be compared. That is Honorable Amadou Sorogo, our former MP, and me, who is uh, the next NDC MP after Sorogo. And you will recall that the people of Medina gave Honorable Sorogo 20 years, you know, to serve them. The first four years, he tried, even though he won uh, the vote at the primaries, um, he, he couldn't win the main election. The second four years, he won the main election. The third four years, I mean, the second four years when he won, we were in opposition, like I, I am now. The, the third one, when he won, we were now in power. The fourth one, we were in power again. The last one was when he lost uh, in 2016. And so when you compare the fact that we gave Sorogo 20 years as delegate in Medina, and you compare that to me, who is just a new entrant, and I've served them for just two years, in Parliament, what would be the basis of even comparison in the first place? Incumbent Member of Parliament for Kaikwe North, Theresa Awuni Ladi, is the only aspirant in the region going unopposed. While speaking to City News, she touts her achievements as a one-term Member of Parliament. If I'm not mistaken, this crowd is only coming from Kaikwe North, and when we move, the office is going to be empty. And so it is the trust my people have reposed in me. It is a challenge they have given me. Other candidates are equally qualified to come. But these delegates around here sent a signal that they were not ready to go into any competition whatsoever. It is a challenge they have given me right. that go in peace and deliver. And that is what I am showing them. For first time contenders, they believe the prospects of winning is huge. The questions were basically about my contributions to the party. And um, yeah, essentially that was what it was about. My contributions to the party and the role I played in the party and what I intend to do when I go into parliament and whether when I get into parliament uh, I will be able to play the same role for the party again. And I answered in the affirmative, that's all. So you are uh, confident that you'll be passed by the vetting committee? I have already been passed and I took number two, which is a sign of victory. Yeah. You have number two? Yes, number two. What are some of the questions again they ask you specifically? We want to I have just said that they asked me about my contributions to the party, which I have told them the role I play on the various committees in the party. Okay, if you really and want to push you, what are some of the contributions you've made to the party? I, I serve on different committees, governance committee, manifesto committee, security committee, all kinds of committees. And of course, there is a lot of work that goes on there. We can't divulge everything here, but once you are on a committee in the party, Clearly there is some role or some duties that you perform and that's all I'm alluding to. One can't be complacent, one can't be too all-knowing and all too confident. You've got to work. It, it requires a lot of effort. It's a continuous process. In the last two years, I've been working the grounds, really, really working the grounds and getting so close um, to the delegates and the constituents. I'm very confident that the work we've put in, the innovative approach we've, um, uh, uh, we've approached it, um, 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 the tactics we've uh, embarked on, and obviously in the last, in the next few weeks, I mean, how we are going to ensure that we maintain the momentum is as, as, as the surest ways to ensuring that we win. I'm very confident in just not only my abilities, but all the tactics, strategies, and things, uh, effort that we put into the campaign thus far. Really confident that the delegates of the party would uh, would be moved by that. 
So we'll still stay with the NDC. We'll go to its um, headquarters where vetting is still ongoing. And my colleague, Philip Nilate, is there to give us some more details. Philip, what's the current situation? Who is currently being vetted? <laughs> So currently, um, the vetting committee just ended with the uh, parliamentary candidate or hopefuls for the Adenta constituency, and that includes Mohammed Ab uh, Ahmad, uh, Adamu Ramadan and also uh, Linda Asibi Awuni. We have Na Nana Oye Bampo Ado, and we have Bright uh, Morgan. And the uh, vetting committee has moved to uh, vet uh, the uh, parliamentary candidate hopefuls for the Chobu constituency after it will move to Okaipo Central and Ayawaso um, or Anyaso rather. Today, the vetting committee is not uh, vetting parliamentary uh, hopefuls from the uh, Ayawaso West Wagon. I have here with me the general secretary of uh, the uh, Greater Accra Regional um, Branch of the National Democratic Congress and who is also a member of uh, the uh, vetting committee. Anaboya, welcome to City Newsroom. Thank you very much. So, um, how has the exercise been today? Well, uh, you can see the euphoria around the place. Our members have shown maturity, especially the supporters who came to support their various aspirants. And it tells you that whatever the party has put in place is working perfectly. Uh, today, we are expected to vet 37 aspirants. Uh, unfortunately, um, one constituency has been taken out, which is um, Ayawaso West Wagon. Any reason? Yeah, the reason is that um, there has been some challenges that the party at the national level needs to look at. So it, that has been communicated to us. And as members of the vetting committee, it, will, it is our duty to stand down that particular constituency. That notwithstanding, uh, the 10 other constituencies are going through up to the end. We are expected to vet, that is, uh, 34 candidates by, before the close of the day. And so far, have you had some individuals who have been disqualified during this exercise? Yes, the committee has done a lot of work. There are issues with certain aspirants that we need clarification to make sure that the decisions that the vetting committee takes will be a decision that will stand the test of time. Well, we don't want a, a situation where we take a decision and it has to travel to another level. We want to do a very professional work. So a constituency like Sege, we step down Sege, although we've done the vetting for all of them. Uh, one aspirant has been disqualified, but the other candidate, we need to do further checks on uh, uh, his eligibility. And for that reason, the whole constituency has been put on hold, pending the final decision by the committee, and hopefully by Wednesday, decisions will be taken. We have a, a constituency like Medina, where one of the aspirants uh, has been disqualified. We also have a constituency like... Let's hold on with the Medina. Uh, what is the reason why this um, parliamentary candidate hopeful has been disqualified? That is Prince. Um, Zakaria, can you share with us the reason why he's been disqualified? Yeah, um, we are having challenges with his eligibility, that's eligibility issues. Um, issues of he being a member of the UFP party, issues of his uh, four year mandate to qualify him as a parliamentary candidate, which uh, he has not been able to uh, achieve. So these are areas that we as a vetting committee is looking at. And based on the guidelines that has been given to us, we had no option than to... Well, he has said that he's going to contest as an independent candidate. What will be your quick comment on this? Well, um, normally when decisions are taken, um, it's difficult. It's difficult. But I believe that with time, uh, he will heal. Uh, there's enough room for every member of the party. We all have several rules to play to make sure that uh, what Ghanaians are wishing for will come to fruition. That is the exit of the MPP. And I know my friend, um, with some days uh, uh, past, 
he will come down. So, aside, apart from that, do you have any other challenges with other constituencies that you can move on to what is happening tomorrow and the next day? Well, apart from uh, those ones that I've enumerated, I think we've had a very fruitful vetting. And I'm, I must commend uh, the leadership of the national, national executives on the panel, especially uh, Honorable Barbara Sam uh, Samwa, the Deputy National uh, Deputy General Secretary, and then uh, His Excellency, former Ambassador uh, uh, Sampi Yali. Uh, they've been of great support to the local team. The local team, they've been uh, of great support to us. And if you look at how things have gone on within the first day, it tells you that uh, Greater Accra once again will have a very fruitful vetting. If you remember, uh, before the 2020 elections, we did go through a similar vetting process. And the atmosphere was just lovely, like you see today. It tells you that we as a region and the national executives and the constituency executives are doing something right. And uh, the second day, third day, I can assure all our party supporters, the general public, Ghanaians who are watching the NDC, that will do the right things. So just a brief one, what is happening tomorrow, that is Tuesday and Wednesday, just 60 seconds. Only. Yeah, tomorrow we'll be having uh, 37 aspirants that are going to be vetted. And um, we have Ada and some other constituencies that will follow. Many thanks for your time. And that is the General Secretary of uh, the National Democratic Congress um, in the Greater Accra Region, Honorable Tetetai, who is also a member of the vetting committee uh, once Greater Accra is uh, concerned. And so far, uh, the vetting has been successful, and they have some more aspirants in there uh, from the Trobo constituency, Vivian. Thank you so much, uh, Philip. So that's uh, my colleague Philip Nilaite giving us details live from the NDC sport headquarters where veteran is currently going on. Let's still stay with the NDC. We'll take you to the northern region because the northern regional veteran committee has disqualified an aspirant seeking to contest the Tamale South seat in the northern region. A Professor Bawa Abdul Fatal, who is seeking to contest incumbent Harun Idrisu and the constituency, has been disqualified based on grounds that he has not been active in the party for the past four years. Meanwhile, the committee says Professor Bauer is at liberty to file for an appeal against the decision of the party. From the northern region, let me take you to the western region. Now, in the western region, the NDC on Monday began vetting parliamentary hopefuls for 14 out of the 17 constituencies in the region. The three constituencies left out are Evaluate, Jira, Ajumu, Amenfi East, and Takwa and Swam. In all, 35 aspirants submitted their nomination forms to contest the 14 seats. However, three members of parliament, including the MP for Wasa Amenfi, Isaac Aj Mensa, MP for Pristia Huni Valley, Wisdom Kujo, and MP for Elembele, Emmanuel Amakofibwa, who is also the Deputy Minority Leader of Parliament, are running unopposed. Now, speaking to City News in Second D, the Western Regional NDC Communications Officer Richard Kekmensa says holding on with the three constituencies is strategic to the fortunes of the party in the region. So far, it's been so good. A lot of misgiving, but we cannot say anything else. Is the vetting committee will have to finish and brief the media about the outcome. So whatever you are hearing around is rumor by rumor. I was inside. I know what is happening there. We have not come out to, with any concrete uh, evidence on anything. So let us finish. When we finish the vetting, we will know who is qualified to contest, who was vetted. At. Some even on vetting. I agree that they will step down. So let us finish the whole process and we will give the, 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 the media the whole briefing of whatever transpired. We have a strategy in place to run and make sure at the end of 2024 elections, we have the majority of the parliamentary seat. We've done it before. Four years ago, we put on, on hold uh, Amen fees. Everybody was saying, why have you delayed the election? But we knew what we were doing. We went ahead and won the election.
We'll move away from the NDC and indeed politics and do some other stories. Traders who deal in beverages and related products in Kumasi in the Ashanti region are predicting dwindling sales and collapse of businesses in the coming months with the passage of three major revenue bills by Parliament on Friday. City News' Ashanti regional correspondent Hafiz Tijani has more. Janet Akumia operates this shop where beverages and other soft drinks are sold on a wholesale basis. On a normal day, she receives customers from communities in parts of the Ashanti region who buy her products. But recent hikes in the prices of these products are getting her customers to complain. A lot of them complain about price, the way they increase price nowadays. So some will come in and then... You may, maybe yesterday you bought the thing at maybe 90 cities and today why it's at 120 cities and be like, ah, why is that your things are you increasing price anyhow? And I'll be like, I'm not the one increasing price, but those who bring it are those increasing prices of goods. So it's not my fault. So they've been complaining about the, how things have been increasing. The price of items have been increasing now. Parliament on Friday, March 31, 2023, passed the Excise Duty and Excise Tax Stamp Amendment Bill 2022, the Income Tax Amendment Bill 2022, and the Growth and Sustainability Levy Bill 2022. The Excise Duty Amendment Bill which will impose a 20% tax on cigarettes and e-smoking devices as well as sweetened beverages, spirits and wines is projected to rake in about 400 million Ghana cities annually. Janet says her business is threatened by this tax. Because of the taxes, the amount of sales will reduce. That's the first problem. And then the main burden will be like, we will not get the, um, the money to pay our workers and also the rent fee because at first maybe I'm, I earn one CD from each of all the goods here, each I earn one CD. In a day I can, I can sell about 100 packs, I earn 100 CDs within a day. So within a day, maybe I'm, I'm paying my um, employers about two, 200 CDs a month, let's say that 200 CDs a month. So I assume that within a week, by the end of the week or two weeks, I'll get the money to pay them. Then the next two weeks will be for rent and some other little, little expenses. Right now, I don't sell that 50 packs again. Right now, I sell about uh, 100 packs again, sorry. I sell about 20 or 30 packs. I can't get that money because 30 cities a day divided times um, 30 days. Can you imagine that it's only 900 cities? And I'm paying about 600 cities to only my employers. I'm here to pick um, taxes from this same money, 900 cities. I also pay rent fee, light bills, and other things. So meaning that you always run at a loss. Customers come from far and near to purchase these products from wholesale shops like this one. These retailers are equally worried about the inimical effects of the taxes on their businesses. Are you out to find a ten cities no? Over by now, we are about twenty cities, thirty cities, forty cities. On my side, come over there, five cities, big one. Increment, you know, no more sun raising high. About sun, na ya blend. So, for so this are twenty percent with two mudia. And for so collapse business, be our gonna have ya. I'm why. So, but fun, nema no. And nema mi enu sika na uda fa ba ako. As an sika na na swati. Oh, but fun, nema kitwe bi se. Na no bo be bre, sika be bre. Na ya da fun, nema kitwe bi. Ya ko anaka sika ni. In October 2022, traders at the Kumasi Central Business District closed their shops over what they said were exorbitant tax policies affecting their businesses. The leadership of these traders view the recently passed tax measures as one that will push many out of business. We are already in, in a system we cannot predict what will happen tomorrow. The surest prediction I can give is that business is going to collapse and more businesses are going to get collapsed. We are going to lay off a lot of people. We are going to default in our loan repayment with the banks. That is what I can predict. And I can also predict government will not be able to rake in such money he envisaged to rake because there will be no be businesses for him to tax them. For now, traders like Janet can only do the simple thing of passing the cost on to their customers now wholesalers at shops like this one say they will not have any option than to pass on the burden onto the consumer but retailers who are coming here to purchase their items 
say their businesses are on the verge of collapse. Hafiz Tijani, City News, Kumase, Ashanti Region. You're still watching the City Newsroom with me, Vivian Kai Loko. When we come back, Electricity Company of Ghana continues with its disconnection exercise. To stay with us, we'll be right back. It is important for husbands to support their wives who test positive for HIV when they are pregnant. The assistance I got from my husband encouraged me to follow all the guidelines given by the nurses and doctors. I gave birth to an HIV negative child. I'm therefore appealing to all men to test for HIV and encourage their wives to do the same. All pregnant women should test for HIV and follow instructions given by their healthcare providers. This will help them to have HIV-free babies. Men and women, let's work together to have an HIV-free generation. Our children must be free to shine. Smiles are one of the most important things we have. Globally, one in two children suffer from cavities. Pepsodent with maximum cavity protection repairs tiny holes before they become cavities. Because every smile matters. Finally, anyone can become a household. Oh, wow. Yeah. <laughs> you will flip a real estate gaming platform that allows you to play and stand a chance of winning a house or cash or consolidated yeah! plans, such as savings towards a house. Simple and easy to play. Visit www.yougoflip.com Buy a ticket to enter the game. Wait for the end of the game to enjoy the win. Anyone can win. Flip it or own it. Yeah! This advertisement has been vetted and approved by the Gaming Commission of Ghana. Play responsible, not for persons below 18 years, and gaming can be addictive. Plus is a fully skimmed evaporated milk. Creamy Plus is available in a shop near you. This message has been vetted and approved by the FDA. Haven't you heard? EGL Ramadan Easter promotion. promotion. Electroland Ghana Limited is offering you quality products from Samsung, Toshiba, Nasco, and Media. Choose your choice. Media AC, Samsung AC, Nasco AC. <laughs> With 229 Ghana CDs, get yourself a Nasco gas stove. Buy one, get one free. Some stocks last. With 1,099 Ghana CDs, and Nasco television is yours. Grab your TV ranging from 32 inches, 40 inches, to 98 inches. I tell you. Simply put it, all types of refrigerators and washing machines, microwaves, and sound bars are available as Easter and Ramadan. Electrical and Ghana Limited is the promotion. Don't, Don't let this opportunity pass, pass you by. Ah, I don't want to be a I don't want to be a I don't 
The winning numbers are 10, 12. Your lottery experience just got better with the new NLE Instant Payment. Play on the NLE machine and if you win up to 1,200 Ghana cities, you will be paid instantly without any stress via shop code star 389 star 1000 hash. Payments above 1,200 Ghana cities can be redeemed at the newly established payment centers. Hey! <laughs> NLE Instant Payment and now and you're picking grind. NLE Development through Games. And you're welcome back to the City Newsroom with me, Vivian Kai Loko. Now, the Electricity Company of Ghana has disconnected Atlantic Life Sciences Limited from the national grid over an 800,000 Ghana City debt as of March 3rd, 2023. Now, Atlantic Life Sciences Limited was commissioned in 2022 by President Okufuado under the government's One District, One Factory initiative. The ECG Tax Force is also following up on 28 other companies, which owe a total of 80.5 billion Ghana cities. Atlantic Life Sciences Limited is a pharmaceutical company located on the Aplau stretch in the Ningo Pram Pram municipality. Now, City News is Fred Duho has more. The electricity company of Ghana is racing against time to pay its power producers, being the IPP, Bui Power Authority, uh, talk of Gridco, and a number of other. Uh, institutions that are producing power for them to distribute to customers. So being in the third week of this exercise, the electricity company of Ghana says is going out brutally against all of its customers that do owe the power distributor some sort of money. Hence, starting from this particular place, which is the Fabric Metal Company Limited, they owe to the tune of about 4 million Ghana cities. And the tax force has gone in to engage with management of Fabri Metal. And the resolution is that they are going to settle 2 million out of that amount and do the rest roughly by Thursday, where they would be able to raise the rest to clear their debt. So far, we're going to move to another location where we are hoping to um, engage or see what the tax force is all about. But to put on record, the tax force that I am moving with within the Tema region is chasing about 80.5 million Ghana cities. That is from about some 25 companies on their list. So as this team is chasing some 25 companies, another team is also elsewhere chasing other customers to redeem their payments before the uh, end of this whole exercise by April 20. So we are moving to another location now to see how the exercise goes. Atlantic Life Sciences Limited, one of the biggest pharmaceutical companies or production companies in the country, by extension in the West African sub-region, has been taken off by the tax force from the national grid over a 500,000 Ghana cities debt that they owe. It was 800,000. They've managed to settle about 300,000 of it, but the tax force won't have any of that. They've asked them to settle at least uh, half of the 500,000, but they are unable to cough out certain amounts, and they've since been taken off the national grid. And this is the second place we are visiting in the day managers of these facilities would have to come to a certain level of compromise or uh, by some level uh, pay that amount of money to be able to be restored to the national grid but as of now leaving their premises they've uh, reconnected to their plant so they are depending on external power source a secondary power source to power their operations here at the Atlantic Life Sciences Limited on the uh, Aplau stretch, not too far from 
the Saglemi affordable housing unit. This is one of the one district, one factory uh, initiative or investors that has come into the country that was commissioned uh, by the president of the Republic of Ghana last year. And ever since they started operation, they've been able to produce some uh, pharmaceutical products uh, and they've been able to uh, sell or export some of their products across the sub-region. So we've come to the quarry where people, um, a company here, TT Quarry, is uh, breaking stones, rocks, and also making seals. And they owe over 300,000 Ghana cities. They've been asked to settle at least uh, half of that. And the company owner says he's not present, and his present location is quite far from town. So he's been given the benefits of the doubt uh, for him to settle 250,000 Ghana cities by tomorrow morning. And they will receive the reports and then subsequently move in to uh, do business with him. My name is Fred Duo reporting for City News. Meanwhile, an aspiring assembly man of the Mampo electoral area in the lower Manya Krobo municipality of the eastern region has been detained by the Odomasa Krobo police for allegedly engaging in illegal power connection. A team from the power distribution company on Monday, 27th March, disconnected the meter of Mr. Tete for meter bypassing. Emmanuel Tete, a leading member of the MPV communications team in the lower Manya Krobo area, according to sources, illegally new town following an earlier disconnection by the East. after being summoned by the company. He, however, illegally reconnected himself We move away from that, and the district chief executive for Gomwa East, Solomon Dakokwam, has described Thursday's eviction exercise where over 1,000 residents of Sun City, a suburb of Gomwa Budumburam, were kicked out of their homes by a litigant as an act of insurgency on the district. Central Regional Correspondent Calvin Stete has more. On Thursday, March 30, 2023, over 1,000 residents of Sun City, a suburb of Gomwa Butumburam and the Gomwa East District of the Central Region, were kicked out of their homes by litigants who had won a court judgment to that effect, and so persons occupying the said 15-acre land, including women and children, were evicted by the police and a tax force. According to City News sources, the private landowner had secured a court ruling against traditional authorities of the area who sold the land to some residents about some 25 years ago. There was also indication that some of the residents had made payment to the owner of the land as renegotiations were ongoing to repurchase the land from him until the demolition. But barely five days after the incident, District Chief Executive for the area, Solomon Dakokwam, has described the incident as an attack since the laid down procedures were not used by the litigant and the police in a victim persons who occupied the buildings. The DC also cautioned against police allowing themselves to be induced and used for what he did in a such exercise supported by the police in future and wants the IGP to delve into the matter. After the court ruling, the, the so-called owners have engaged the residents, the same people they evicted yesterday, and have agreed on certain amount for them to pay to him to rebuy the same land. We don't have problem with that. This is, this is the receipt that some of them are, are, are paid. But aside all this, they organized this number of policemen to the place to go and evict them. The question is, are the police very sure they went there to, do, to take possession or they went there to, to do uh, uh, money collection, I mean debt collection. Was it an attempt by them to help the people to go and collect their, their money for them, debt collectors? The policemen are doing debt collection now, or they really went there 
to do repossession. If they had not repossessed, why did they, how did they engage them in that discussion to arrive at this 25,000 that they are saying, for which this man, this, this man has paid 10,000 out of that. So we cannot accept that. And we are sounding this one, we're sending this, this message to the IGP and the Jubilee House that we will not allow, in fact, we will not allow anybody in uniform, whether to be, because they are brothers or siblings or policemen or whatever, to use the uniform to intimidate us or our, our citizens. You're still watching the City Newsroom with me, Vivid Kai Loko. When we come back, scores of NDC supporters throng. Continues. Just stay with us. We'll be right back with our story. I'm having my toys. The very reason why I took it for us. See, the price is very good and it's spacious to contain all of us. Alpha Mexico. Now I'm a landlord. I don't pay rent. And my Airbnb business is booming. To be Palmini. Bank in Amenara say an asset Alpha Mexico. The pension pay mu 20%. The payment plan. Just say and you're very smooth. This is a healthy place to raise our families and create in peace. Come on, be my neighbor. Alphabet City, the ABC of home sweet home. Alphabet City is a classy and peaceful gated community in Sacramento. We have 24-7 top-notch security and high-quality access roads. We have three bedrooms and two washrooms. Three bedrooms and three washrooms with boys' quarters. We have three bedrooms and four washrooms. We have two bedrooms and two washrooms, all with beautiful kitchens and kitchenettes. Call Alphabet City on 0240-111119 or 050-449999. Alphabet City, the ABC of Home Sweet Home. Hi there, my name is Anita Erskine. Now I know things are a little tight, but how about I share a few tips with you on how to be a good Samaritan without spending a dime. Identify a situation where financial support is crucial. It could be a student who needs to top up on school fees, a community that needs to build a clinic, or a school that needs to finish up a classroom block. Find out how much is needed and write it down. Look at yourself in the mirror and smile. Find your favorite outfit and join me on stage for Ghana's favorite game show, How Can We Help You? With over 400,000 Ghana CDs and cash prizes already given out, Season 2 of How Can We Help You is back with more exciting games and bigger prizes to play for. Stop giving excuses about making a difference and step up to the plate. We'd be so excited to see you because How Can We Help You is not just an exciting show. It's also about changing lives. So it's game on! Proudly brought to you by First National Bank. First National Bank. How can we help you? Showing on City TV every Saturday at 6 p.m. Repeats on Sundays at 12 p.m. years of sharing his story and his praise. Ministering at the Silver Jubilee edition is praise and worship legend, Don Moen. God is good all the time. The young, sensational and anointed minstrel, Moses Bliss. And the host choir, the Evergreen Harvest Gospel Choir. will deliver a soul-inspiring drama performance. Join us at the UPSA Auditorium on Good Friday, 7th April 2023, 4pm sharp. Tickets, 
single 80 Ghana cities, double 150 Ghana cities, and VIP 150 Ghana cities. Dial star 725 star 1155 hash on all networks and buy your tickets now. Tickets are also available at Airport Shell, Bachelor Total, Sunny 88.7 FM, and all Harvest Chapel branches in Accra. Children are not left out. Children from ages 5 to 12 will enjoy an awesome experience at the HP Kids session featuring King's Kid, Louis Pascal, Casa Harry, and many more. Entry is free for kids once you purchase an adult ticket. Come let's celebrate. It's the Silver Jubilee. Have us praise. Get your praise on. <laughs> See you then. on the seafront in Atuabo in the rich oil and gas hub of the western region. The warmth of the resort can fill your soul. Our well-receptive environment brings you home away from home. The strand of beauty detailing the state-of-the-art facility makes your stay even more fun within the well-thought-through architectural features hosting all sorts of fun games. Maha Beach Resort has an assortment of packages for all occasions. Maha Beach Resort, redefining indigenous hospitality. And you're welcome back to the City Newsroom with me, Vivian Kai Loko. Now, scores of NDC supporters thronged the Judicial Service Department in Tamale on Monday morning, where the High Court was hearing a criminal case against a Savlelugu member of Parliament, Jacob Idris, of alleged possession of firearms without lawful authority. The court on Friday, March 31st, issued a bench warrant for the arrest of the member of Parliament, who is also the second accused over his absence in court on two occasions. Our Northern Regional Correspondent, Daina Ingwan, was at the court and came through with this report. Hundreds of NDC supporters gathered in front of the Tamale Judicial Service Department on Monday morning to solidarize with the Supreme Member of Parliament, Jacob Idris, who is standing a criminal trial. It will be recalled that during the 2020 general elections, there were some electoral violence in Tavlugu in the northern region, which led to one death. Subsequently, the police, upon a tip-off, conducted a search at the NDC constituency office where an AK-47 rifle and 60 rounds of ammunition were retrieved at the party's office and was alleged to be owned by the NP. Two persons, thus the NP and a chief, were later arraigned. However, on Friday, 31st March 2023, the MP, who is also second accused, was absent in court for the second time. This did not go down well with the court, hence a bench warrant was issued. On Monday, April 3, the counsel for the second accused praised the court to rescind the bench warrant, arguing that his client has been consistent in attending the hearing and his absence on those few occasions was not deliberate. He added that the accused is interested in the case and is ever ready to cooperate with the courts to see the end of the case. In response to the counsel, the judge, Justice Richard Kujapwa, said the reason given by the defendant for his absence was not convincing enough, hence the bench warrant. He, however, granted the request of the counsel, noting that the warrant has not been effected. The Member of Parliament for Tamale South, Haruna Idrisu, who is one of the lawyers for the defence team, spoke to the media after the court granted their request. We just... Jacob Abdelai is a very responsible elected Member of Parliament and would never ever be a fugitive of justice. He probably did not exercise good judgment in the reason he provided to the court, which did not please my lord. 
but subsequently we have to avoid a third occurrence of this and i'm sure he's accordingly advised the np who was present in court wants the existing laws to be reviewed so that sitting member of parliament can be pardoned in some peculiar instances and can be absent in court we probably will have to make a strong argument whether parliamentary emergencies cannot be a justification because that particular day the Honorable Jacob Abdullah had to be in Parliament. The long-standing rule of law is that there can be no taxation without representation. He had to be in Parliament, in the House of Parliament, to exercise his representative role as Member of Parliament, to vote on some tax legislation. The judge did not find that convincing enough. So that is where the law, we have to see how to evolve our democracy and our jurisdictional uh, law. Meanwhile, during Monday's hearing, the final witness was called to give his statement and was cross-examined. Here is the counsel for the accused persons speaking. In their statements they made, they indicate that there were several other persons that were there during the incident and all that, but they haven't been able to file any such testimony independent of that of the police. So our mind is that it was a orchestrated matter. The police set out from Tamale purposely to go and create a scenario at Savlugu and put it on top of the MP. Because our idea was that if they were press men, they were military men, they were other police people from Savlugu, why didn't they write statements? Why are they not in court to testify? And it's only the four police officers that left the original command that went to Savulugu and came back and they are the only persons testifying. So that was the reason I sought to show that they are not credible persons and that it was planned and executed rightly. But unfortunately, it's a court of law. The member of parliament for the Savulugu constituency prayed to the court to rescind its decision of a bench warrant. The court granted their request and cautioned the second accused not to repeat same. From Tamale, I am Daina Ungwan, reporting for City News. Now, the Anglican Church has held a special prayer service for President Akufuado and his family as he celebrated his 79th birthday. The service, according to the church, was to thank God for the life of the president. The church says the president needed God's guidance in these difficult times. City News' Sami Yafi has more. Preaching the sermon at a short ceremony at the Jubilee House, the Anglican Bishop of Asante Mampo, Dr. Cyril Kwabna Smith, says President Kofado and Ghanaians must rely on God during these difficult times. He says without God, the president will not be able to prosecute his vision for the country. President Kofado on Wednesday, March 29, 2023, celebrated his 79th birthday. Dr. Sir Kobna Smith says God must be in the center of all things. If to celebrate the special day of celebration, let us agree with King David when he recognizes an important person in his life, Adonai. Your Excellency, I want to introduce Adonai to you on this your 79th birthday. He is the Lord of life. Psalm 46 says, The Lord of hosts is with you. The God of Jacob is your refuge. Your Excellency, Adonai, Lord, means four things. One, and I might use the words, the letter L in Lord. One, he is the Lord of life. All life emanates from him. And we owe him due obeisance. We owe him due recognition. And we must look up to him at all times. Psalm 1 and 21. A beautiful psalm. It says, I will lift up my eyes unto the hills. From whence cometh my help? My help comes from Adonai, who made heaven and earth. Verse says, Let us continue to look up to him. Let us continue to lean on Adonai. Let us continue to listen to him. And he is with us. Second, 
the letter O in Lord. He is the only one, none other. Well, that's it for today's edition of the City Newsroom. Our website, citynewsroom.com, has more. Subscribe to CityTube on YouTube for more exclusive video content from City TV. You can also watch City TV on DSTV channel 363 and Go TV channel 182. My name is Evan Kai Loco. Many thanks for watching.